Okay, thank you for this introduction and uh, thank you for attending this session, which uh, was not trivial given also the position, so well done. <laughs> what I want to say today is a uh, report about uh, uh, our experience as IFMB in uh, health technology assessment of medical devices, specifically for low income setting. And then I will reveal you at the end of the presentation why we are interested in low income settings. Now, uh, I don't want to start too far. I'm sure that uh, we all uh, are familiar in this uh, forum with uh, uh, the idea that medical devices are deeply different from drugs. And we may all agree that in the past 10 years, health technology assessment has been much more focused on drugs than on medical devices, although it started in the other way around. <laughs> now, this is literature, this is a paper from 2011. I don't think we need to recall those concepts. I would only like to recall your attention on two main things. Obviously, we know that uh, I've not yet seen a drug which is uh, diagnostic, while the majority of medical devices we focus on may be diagnostic, and every time we assess something which is diagnostic, we are in a much more difficult situation. But more important, medical devices are deeply dependent by the environment in which they are operationalized. Okay. Now, as World Federation of Biomedical Engineers, we uh, associate on a global level uh, those which are trained and work in the field of designing medical devices, which means that I can uh, honestly tell you that when we design a medical device, especially in Europe, in the States, we assume that uh, there are clear situations in which the device will work. So let's make it very easy. So let's assume we have in the center people which touch the device or are touched by the device. But the question is, what is surrounding this microenvironment? people and medical devices. Now, in Europe, in Canada, in the States, the question is fairly easy because we have clear international standards which we brought, we have clear requirements in terms of minimum requirements for medical settings, which obviously tell us what are the minimum requirements for structural uh, minimum requirements, then we have technological minimum requirements, what you should have in order to have ideology, what you should have in terms of devices, and organizational, which means that uh, we know exactly how many cardiologists we need if we want to open a division to do this kind of cardiology. We know exactly how many, uh, I don't know, anesthesiologists, which kind of nurses we need and stuff like that. Because we have those recommendations which are prescribed by our national laws. And also because we are those which brought those standards which then we like to follow. When I say we, I mean Europe, States, Canada, Medical devices, they basically are based on those pillars. Which means that what happens when those pillars are less defined than that? This is where we started thinking. Uh, I don't want to annoy you, I just put in some text because uh, then the presentation will be online and uh, obviously uh, you can offline read those notes. But the idea is that uh, when we work in Europe, I don't know, I, I'm more familiar with Italian legislation because that's where I come from. We know exactly which kind of medical doctors we need in a surgery theater, how many, as a minimum requirement, then you can have more. Which means that when we do our studies, we work in a circumstance which is very well defined, very well standardized. And then this means that if I want to move the result of my trial from one hospital in Italy to another, it's fairly easy because they are respecting the same minimum standard, minimum requirements. What is the situation if we move out from Europe and we move in low income settings where actually those requirements, uh, those requirements are not as clear as they are in Europe? So this is the kind of question we are asking ourselves. The same for structure and the same for organization. Basically the idea is this one, that if you start removing those pillars, then medical devices start to be a different animal than the one we know in our comfortable zone. This is where we start. Now, this is just a field analysis I've been finishing uh, two days ago. I landed here directly from Benin where I visited five hospitals and, well, I don't think that's new to many of you if you're an expert of uh, low-income countries. So, this is, for instance, more or less the situation of electric plants. When we started doing the consequences, that when we started doing some of those measurements, uh, I don't want to enter into detail, but uh, the first one is the voltage on the neutral, it should be zero, it was six volts. 
The other two, those are the voltage on the ground, should have been zero, 84. This is in the laboratory of analysis. The record was there, 107 volts on the ground. And the reason was that uh, this plug, which was an adapter from UK to uh, Shuko, has not the ground, so it was completely floating. Which means that if the surgeon touched this device and then the patient, you are killing the patient. So whatever we found in our trial, in our settings, should be reconsidered because obviously there are side effects that uh, are completely different from our region. So this was our impression. This was a radiology. What if you put the phones on your mobile phone? It was the best place to make a phone call. It was full field. It should have been shifted. <laughs> It was fresh and nice, so we were going there to have our phone calls, which was that. Now, this is the trend of voltage. That's a measurement in my summer house in Rome. You know, voltage is okay, then slightly up during night, because it's obvious. This is the same situation in the dormitory in Benin. So you see more or less the same trend, apart the fact that some suddenly the current jumped to 300 volts. 300 volts, it's enough to destroy your medical devices. Uh, if I want to put on an histogram, this is what happened to the voltage, which is more or less in ground, 220 plus or minus 5 volts. That's what happened on the same scale in Benin, twice this range. Our medical devices are not resilient to that, which means that this compromises all we know about safety, efficacy, and all the other stuff. How this propagates in our health system. This is, this is something interesting. This is uh, the voltage trend into the surgical theater. So after the, uh, you know, <coughs> they don't have medical uh, isolating transformer, they didn't have a potential node, but at least they had then, uh, um, well, something to rectify the current. So you see clearly there was current, then suddenly something lower because the current went away, and this is the battery, which actually provides much better voltage. This is in another day, and that's what we noticed, that uh, every time there is a blackout, there is a phase before that in which the current is starting to be less stable, which means this can be predicted. Perhaps if our medical devices were smarter, you can read this voltage and say, well, something is happening, let's shield myself. It's easy, 10 pounds, you can do that. There's nothing like that on the market yet. To protect the device, because we know that medical devices are donated, they have been coming from Europe where they have been designed, and then they are applied in another environment, which is then dangerous for device, patient, and medical doctors. So, our conclusions about that was that medical devices are too dependent from the environment in order to be uh, assessed as we normally do with drugs. Drugs are also dependent, but much less than medical devices, which means that. Uh, I'm not sure that we can just apply whatever we know to medical devices. I'm not sure that we can take results, measure it in Europe, and assume they are the same in other places, in low-income settings. Because there are heterogeneity of operational conditions, and I mean HR, human resources, the anesthesiologist was not a medical doctor. He was a brave guy which learned the basic, and he was doing anesthesiology, but the alternative was to die. So the risk benefit. It's completely on a different scale. And, uh, well, several questions arise. Are our safety standards evidence-based or not? Because we started thinking about standards in the 50s when evidence-based medicine was not invented. So perhaps we are spending too much time or uh, money on our safety standard? We don't know. There have been not much in this direction. Is our safety approach evidence-based or not? We don't know. And the situation is certainly different. In, so perhaps we should reconsider that. But our recommendation is that in the meantime, I hope at some point uh, they will have the same hospital we do have in Europe. But in the meantime, we should be aware that we should design more resilient medical devices. We should recondition devices that we donate, making them more resilient, resilient to plants, to users, to humanity in the air. And that's something that I don't see enough discussion unless you don't tell me that I'm wrong. So that's why I wanted to bring this on this table. Here are the few recommendations, which I just mentioned it, but I squeezed my presentation because I wanted to leave space to the colleagues from Benin. There is a Department of Biomedical Engineering at the University Polytechnic of Abe Kalavi, where actually Professor Medinu organized this uh, 
a group of biomedical engineers. They started in 2009 training biomedical technicians and they have been successful. So in 2012, 2017, uh, they took their diploma and things are going better and better. But the best thing is that they are black. They know Benin is organized in 12 administrative uh, regions. Each one has about two or three sanitary districts. And their ambition is to have at least three biomedical technicians, people which can do what I have done systematically because the situation was that you go there, you buy them a new surgery theater, and then the local technician come and install the conditioner where it should not be installed, burning the safety equipment, which is very costly, that we installed it before. So situations are non-stable in time. So whatever is safe today, maybe not in a couple of years. And uh, I normally tend to close my presentation thanking my group because without them I would have not been wherever I was. But today I want to close also thanking in particular the charity of surgeons, which they are in Benin since 15 years, going three times a year, doing a lot of surgeries in a few days with very uh, different conditions than they have in Europe. And they took care of my logistic and without them, they're not possible for me to run this time. Thank you. of what happens in the uh, real world when we are talking around real world data is there. Uh, we have time for one question and perhaps some more in, uh, uh, afterwards. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, I'm Rosa from Mexico and I, I have been working in, I'm a biomedical engineer and I've been working in ACA for you know, more than 10 years. And uh, I think that your approach is very important in a, a, a middle income co country like mine. And uh, I don't know if you have done some work on transferability of clinical results, because this is one of the things that I think it's very, uh, one of the main issues here, is that we are thinking that the, the clinical results that are based in a, in, in, and it happens in all the clinical trials, no? If there's just a, a clinical trials trial that is looking for, looking at effectiveness in a, um, an enclosed uh, situation or efficacy in an enclosed situation and then you have to transfer it to another setting. So I think there are many things there that uh, we can use, there are many studies and uh, I don't know, have you? Mm -hmm. uh, well, no, we have started to, thinking, uh, to think about that and we would like to produce some big ass federation but honestly so far I would not know where to start because uh, I don't think we have enough information to build a model in order to adapt the outcome in a different setting because actually you don't have measurement in those kind of settings. Not yet, there is not enough evidence and I would not know how to transfer. You know, it's a little bit like the platonic mind of the cave. Uh, we see things from our perspective, but uh, how to translate this in reality, I don't know, we need uh, MMSs. 